It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Houston Texans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. All that and more coming up next. At the confluence of the three rivers, the Ohio, the Allegheny, and the Monongahela, we are here at Pittsburgh's AccraSure Stadium. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Houston Texans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. turn this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. Leading him out, the former Stanford man. At quarterback, it's Davis Mills. And remember, when he came out of college, he left early. So a lot of people weren't really paying attention to this young man, but he was entrusted with a leadership role early in his NFL career and didn't shy away from it. His goal, continue to prove that there should have been one more quarterback that went in the first round of the 2021 draft. Start on the ground with Pierce. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunk of yards at first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Play fake, Mills. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And they've got it well across midfield down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Call that a very strong gain of 24. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play Never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving. Scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 right at the 40. First and 10, it's Pierce. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. 
Here's second and nine. Mills to throw it. That's complete to his running back, Burkhead. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41 yard line. There's your co NFL record holder, TJ Watt, doing what he does best terrorizing quarterbacks. Even keeping the back end for extra protection on third down, they still couldn't prevent the sack. Now it's fourth and long thanks to a terrific individual effort on defense. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. And back deep, Gunnar Olszewski. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. So here are the Steelers backed up to start their initial drive. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign. Took his game to a new level and made him a first-round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 12-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Harris, and he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Harris going to get it again on second down. He'll rumble for about six up across the 20 to the 22. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gun. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, Makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Pickett on third and one. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain, so they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. To the air on first down with Pickett. Pass complete. George Pickens with it. Now they work this well upfield across the 45. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. That was a nicely run slam route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Harris running straight ahead, and he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Now, what a first down pickup of eight. 
how best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and works through it for a solid game. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 43. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free and it's second down. And we're gonna see this offense try and spread the field a little bit and utilize the outside third of the field, especially against man coverage. But that time, the defense was up to the task forcing the incompletion. On second down, this is Harris. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice, dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Pick it now from the gun here. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 22-yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has. If he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. Pick it to throw on first down. And his throw is incomplete. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. And that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing a shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. Pick it. Uh, he's got it. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Uh, that's a sharp throw right there on third down. They're looking to get the first points of the game, and they certainly don't want to be on a field goal. So that's a nice job to get the hookup and set up a first and goal. From the two, here's first and goal. They'll try and run with Harris. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Najee Harris taking it in from two yards out. And the Steelers will jump on top of the game's first score here this afternoon. So that a great sequence for these guys to begin the ball game. They force the punt on one end, then come right down the field and score on the other. And that's a great example of leaning on each other and building a little momentum that way. How about the defense forcing the punt? Turns it over to the offense with confidence, and they take it downfield and score. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. And he'll put it through to make it 7 0 Steelers. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. Well now to 
kick it away after the touchdown. And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. Mills on first down. Catch made here by Rex Burkhead is running back. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Throwing again on second down. Mills. That's caught. It's Chris Moore. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Pierce now up the middle. And some room to run now. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Holding offense. You can see this quite a bit on running plays with the guys out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right, because it's away from the play usually, so a lot of it goes undetected. But I know this will surprise you. I coach some receivers in the offseason. We work a lot on hand placement and block. Trying to fit it into more, but it's intercepted. It's picked by the linebacker, T.J. Watt. And the Steelers are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield. Well, this wind is definitely going to be a factor as this game goes along. He's throwing straight into it here in the first quarter, and the ball fluttered on him a little bit. He'll definitely have to file that one away and make a mental note of it. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. They'll start to drive with Harris. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. 43 yards on the ground for him so far. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football as they've got it with second down and less than a yard. Back to throw, pick it. That swung out wide to Harris. And they're going to get this down near the 35 yard line. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He said, man, trying to watch an NFL game and trying to count for their passing game, that's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Pick it now on first down. That's caught by Sims. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nice 
nicely executed curl route. the play fake. Here's Pickett. Looking sideline and he's going to have his man as he was able to walk the tightrope there for the completion. It'll go down as a gain of six and it'll be second down. They should have got more out of that though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get upfield with. Not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. First down, and they go back to Harris. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Not a whole lot there on first and goal, and that's what you're looking for defensively. You'll certainly live with giving up just a yard or two in this situation. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Pick it a look to throw it here. And he will throw this one out of the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. Well, to me, there is no question about the intent there. And I think he was a little fortunate that the penalty flag didn't come out for grounding. But he'll get away with it and get another shot on third down. And the Steelers on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. They're looking at a third and goal here. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. So Pickett is off to the sideline and Chris Boswell is on for the Steeler field goal try. This is an easy one, 23 yarder. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So another scoring drive there, Charles, and an early two-score lead. You'd like the six there, partner, but you'll take the three, and I think they have to be happy about the way they moved the ball in these first two drives. They have to feel good about their opportunities the rest of the game. This one taken just inside the 10. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Houston set to take over. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, 
Do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? No. No, not at all. Mills now on second down. He's going to look deep for more. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. They give him a gain of 38. In today's NFL, you know, we talk about quarterbacks and their speed and accuracy, but there's still something about a guy slinging one downfield. And to be honest, this first half hasn't been anything they'd be really proud about. So they needed something like this to change their fortunes. Now they need to make sure they finish this one off, not just with points, but with a touchdown. Yeah, and you see the final number there on how far. Mike Talbot has reached for that red challenge flag, and he'll throw it out there. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now well, here's the call. After review of the play, so Mike Tomlin correcting his assessment to throw the flag there. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Looking to throw his mills. He's going to take another shot here. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Two things you can do in that situation. Run and punt the football or try and take your shot at getting the first down. They chose the latter, but they'll have to punt all the same. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Najee Harris and the rest of this offense work their way back onto the field. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys <laughs> have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. They turn to Harris to begin the drive. Pushes him over. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 63 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. He used the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? and 10 at the 38. Off play action. Pick it. And incomplete. He dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there. Second down. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. To throw on second and 10. Pick it. He gets it to Sims. Complete. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Pickett sets up play action. Here's Johnson with a reception. 
And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 28. Forget the run on third and one. They shot the D and rip off a pretty big play. Time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, be able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory as they've got it to the 28-yard line. First and 10, here's Pickett. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, over the middle. And they'll get him down inside the red zone at the 14. It's also a gain of 14. First down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Steven Sims, a 14-yard touchdown. And his guys now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. Well, with this rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass. And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. And I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, so they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point now by Boswell. He's got it, and it's 17-0. A drive that time of six plays, and it ends with the Steelers finding the end zone. when taken just inside the 10. The Texans offense set to regain possession. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you don't down. don't want to. No, but uh, hold on, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just you called it. I think you just called it desperation time. I think <laughs> yeah. you did. But let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching instead of retreating to use a boxing analogy. Mills throw here into the hands of Moore. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards there for number 15. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Mills now looks to throw on first down. Dance into his left. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. 
Brought down by multiple defenders, and it's a loss of 12. These sacks now, they're starting to pile up, Charles, and that front seven defensively, they've had their way with this offensive line. And I think at this stage, we have to start thinking about different play calls. We've got to start helping this quarterback out because the entire game, he's been under siege. I don't care what the down and distance, they've got to get the ball out of his hands a lot quicker. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Another try after the first down sack. Mills forced out to his left. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. He was out there waving his arms. I mean, you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help. I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is because you got to get his attention because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, and he found the right spot for the completion. On third down, here's Mills. Toward the sideline, it's complete, an athletic grab, but still well short of the first. That's going to bring up fourth down, only a gain of two there. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back, but how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? Set to punt, here's Cameron Johnston. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they have to be pleased with the way that they've moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 20-yard line. Harris will start to drive out. And he stops right at the 25 after a gain of five. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. He gets it complete to Harris. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On first and 10, it's Pickett. He finds Pickens over the middle. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be second down. up on a minute to play in this first half. Looking to throw again on second down. Pick it. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Pick it. He's going to throw it again. Able to find his man. It's Pickens. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half.
Pickett to throw on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Johnson. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Now a second down and six. Looking to throw, pick it. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Steven Nelson. And the Texans are going to take over once again, and they'll have it at their own eight-yard line. They've got a pretty comfortable lead right now, but maybe a little too careless with the football that time for the rookie. I think the key word there is comfortable and there's two schools of thought on it. With that type of a lead, maybe you can take a few more chances because you have a cushion. Others will tell you, don't eat up the cushion with careless play. He'll learn to ride that line as he moves on in his career. First down throw for Mills. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he gets it to the 30 when it's all said and done. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. First and ten here. You know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll just get rid of it. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. To throw, Mills. They dial up the screen here to Burkhead. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Mills to throw it. And it's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there that brings up fourth. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big time. Now, I believe they buzz down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now well, here's the call. After review of the play, the rule in the field is reversed. So that challenge is successful. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Here's Mills. Gets the dump off to Pierce. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. Let's go. 
And they'll throw again. Here's Mills. That's caught by Howard. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. First order of business, though. Let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Houston. And they didn't get a whole lot accomplished through the air in those first two quarters of play. They'll need to up their game if they want to rally all the way back. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. So time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter from the 10. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 22. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. And a short pickup to about the 25. I think we put together a job description for a middle linebacker. We would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take out blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Now pick it. Quick completion here to Johnson. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's another beautiful throw right there. Gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. Now a first down carry for Harris. He'll get this up to the 47 and brought down there. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. To throw on second and six, pick it. He's got this to Pickens. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. When teams practice their plays during the week, they're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day. So it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game, and they hit that one there for big yardage. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. 
They hand this off to Harris. And he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Here's Pickett. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And the Steelers are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players and somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. On the draw, it's Harris. And he's in! Touchdown, Steelers! Najee Harris with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Steelers take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. So another touchdown there. And even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to select is there. You want to run it, you want to throw it, pick a play, any play. They're rocking and rolling right now. Boswell good with the extra point, and the lead is now 24. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was Najee Harris who finished it off with a touchdown run. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. First and 10 now for Mills and the Texans at their own 25-yard line. They'll get things started with a carry by Pierce. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. Mills throw taken in there by Cooks. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 17 on the pickup there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. Oh, that was a nice job there. Quarterback and receiver reading the pressure that was brought. They both knew it was going to open up the middle of the field. Nice little shake and bake at the line of scrimmage. Got right into his route. And the quarterback hit him in stride, and he was able to run free after the catch. Mills throw complete here, pulled in by Howard. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. The first carry down for Rex Burkhead. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves him at third and one. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, 
Linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Mills. Ball well, had his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. Pretty symptomatic of how this game's been going. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. To the air on first down with Pickett. He's going to loft one deep left side here. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. There is something to a game plan with trying to keep a defense honest with a guy with that type of speed. You do so. Send him deep. Try to throw some air under it and hope you connect downfield. On that play, they run successful. A second and 10 forthcoming here. Third quarter action in the Steel City of Pittsburgh, PA. Back to throw. Pickett. Pickens on the slam. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. It's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So first and ten, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild, and here's another completion for good yardage. On the give, this is Harris, and he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. From the 22, pick it. Just a couple yards shy of the end zone. He's now just three yards shy of 197 yards receiving on the contest and a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. 
The deuce is wild here. Second down and two with just about two minutes on the clock. Pick it back to throw. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Pick it. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. A chance to really put this game out of reach. Here's third and goal. They'll try to run with Harris, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. Fourth down now after a loss of two. There have not been a lot of great moments for this defense throughout this game. Finally, they have one they can hang their hat on. A nice stop there. So Pickett is off to the sideline, and Chris Boswell is on for the Steeler field goal try. Boswell's kick is good, and the lead increases even further. It's 27 to nothing now. So tack on three more, though this, it's just a rare drive where they did not find the end zone. Yeah, you're right about that, partner, but at this point, I don't think you're too concerned about that. You just want to possess the football for a while and drain the clock. If you can get three out of it, that's great, too. For the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blow out, let's just say it's been unusual. Now, during that run, an injury here, we got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Second and seven now from the 28. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. That ground game just continues to struggle to really get any momentum in this ballgame, Charles. And you're at the point here, third quarter, down four scores, probably going to have to put it in the air. Oh, no question about it. So that's your only chance, your only opportunity. But think of the pressure you just put on your offensive line because if you're a pass rusher, you're not even thinking about them running the football. All you're doing is getting into that sprinter stance and going after the quarterback. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Well, they were in search of a short gain on third down, and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards. That's a big gainer on that play, and from experience, I can tell you, that's where defensive backs will come into the huddle and say, guys, how about some pass rush? But you're going to say it nicely because those big guys up front, they don't like being criticized very much. Quarterbacks in this league, you know they'll pick you apart if you give them time like that to find receivers downfield. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. 
got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. To throw once more on second and ten. Mills flush to his right. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. His impatience has to be bubbling over, trying to find a way to get his team to the end zone for the first time. He did find a way to break contain and get outside to buy his receivers a little extra time, but the connection couldn't be made on that throw. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Mills to the air again. And that is incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. But not that any of the points would be needed, but CD, they've got enough time left here. They could definitely score on this drive, maybe even an ensuing drive as well if they really want to drive home this landslide victory. Yeah, we're certainly about to see just how aggressive they want to be here down the stretch. And what some coaches do is they try and meet it halfway, meaning they want to continue to run their offense, but they'll put in a lot of backups to do it and then tell the opposing coach, hey, I had to get them some work too. I can't just let them sit over on the sidelines all the time. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he's able to get out to the 32 right down there. 105 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. He was brought down by Malik Collins. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Now Pickett will look to pass it. That's going to be caught by Pickens. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot of fun. It's almost like he said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. The CD, they're up big, but they're still passing it. I mean, this is an offense that's had a lot of success in this game, and it seems like they're just having fun out there. And it does feel like there's been a shift out there, doesn't it, partner? Listen, if you're up, you can continue to do what you want to do. It's up to the other team to make you change how you do things. They'll continue to throw it around until stopped. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. And the Texans will take over. And now out comes Houston. I hate to say it, but at this point, I don't really know that they're playing to win with this deficit in the fourth quarter. They're just trying to erase that zero on the scoreboard, Charles, and get some type of momentum to carry into the film session tomorrow. If you get any type of points on the board, it'll count as a moral victory, although no one will talk about that in the post-game press conference. That's not something you mentioned in the NFL. And this loss, it already stings and will for a while. 
but everyone on that offense knows it'll sting a lot worse if they don't put some points up on the board. Mills hit, and he loses the ball. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And he takes it back to the house. A fumble recovery for a Steelers score. Huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. He'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Fielded right around the eight. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Houston set to take over. At this point, partner, things looking pretty bleak. They still haven't scored here in the fourth quarter, facing the big deficit. I just what silver linings, what can they look to do here offensively? You know, it's funny, I talked about this with a coach in the offseason and kind of had this scenario, like, what feels good to you and what feels good to your team? You're down big, you really have, like, one possession left, and you're trying to put points on the board that don't matter, but do they? And he told me they actually do matter. And in this situation, he's going to try and run the best offense he can run, have at least a little bit. And the ball is out. Burkhead lost it. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. As they say, this game hasn't exactly been one for the books. I mean, we're into the fourth quarter here. And now this happens, another turnover. Not one that they're going to hold up and say, yeah, this has been a banner death. Absolutely. Still sitting on zero. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they have to be feeling pretty good. Comfortable fourth quarter lead as they take over following the fumble recovery. Sensational afternoon continues. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, up big here in the fourth quarter, up really big. That passing incompletion. I don't think they needed the completion, but Charles, this is an offense right now that they're just having fun. They're clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, you're right. They didn't need a completion. They certainly don't need any more points, but they're not going to turn them down. They're going to continue to run what they have in their playbook, and they still want to run it efficiently. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. 
finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. But you just knew that these rushers were eager to do that today. Put him on the ground. Their plan? Introduce themselves individually to this rookie quarterback. They said a load a big way there with a loss of double-digit yards on that sack. On third down, here's Harris. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They do get 10 back, but still a ways to go on fourth. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clipped him off in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. From the 10. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. First and 10 now for Mills and the Texans at their own 22. We're working out of the gun, Mills. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Collins. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. So the completion results there in nine yards. And they'll have a second and one forthcoming. Mills. Steps up. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. T.J. Watt able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Let's go ahead and put check marks by it all, partner. No points. Down by four touchdowns. Haven't had anything going today on offense. Why not add a late sack to the mix? Obviously, a day to forget for all involved. Let's give plenty of credit to this defensive effort. They've been excellent from start to finish. So now after the sack, Mills and the Texans needing to navigate a third and long. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Throw right side, caught by O.J. Howard. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. Now, fourth quarter, certainly not enough time for a comeback, but nice to see them making use of the time remaining to try and make this one a little more respectable. Yeah, I think the ultimate goal, good execution, be crisp, be sharp, and find a way to put some points on the board to make this thing look just a little bit better. It'll be a gain of five, and that's going to bring up second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. To throw again on second down, Mills. Throw right side, taken in by Collins. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Well, I mean, look, obviously there's no 20 or 30-point play in that playbook, but they can try to end things here on a positive note despite trailing big, and that looks like what they're trying to do here by pushing the ball downfield. Well, let me go with the heavy cliche then, partner. Just control what you can control right now. And all they can control here is how their final plays develop. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. A 
Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. To throw again on second down, Mills. Mills can't get away, and down he goes. Alex Highsmith able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Well, collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number, it's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. So now after the sack, Mills and the Texans needing to navigate a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure. And he's going to go down again. Chris Wormley providing a little deja vu. Back-to-back -back sacks. And now they're staring at a fourth and long. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass for us. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Here's Cameron Johnston now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And they have just about put this one on ice as they've got it here first and ten. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive. First down. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. course and push the offense backwards a bit. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five first and 15. They'll run again with Harris. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. It's another first down as this time they get an even 20. Brandon, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about running them into the submission. Uh, right? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Harris running straight ahead. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back down and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. So 
So not just a blowout win for them today, Charles, but a shutout blowout win as well. Clearly just a superior effort on both sides of the ball. Hey, didn't it feel like you get a touchdown, you get a touchdown, and then the defense jumped up and said, hold it, we're getting involved as well. You're exactly right. Big points, both sides contributing a full team win.